pop in our customers mind we can take the time to put that pop in our employees mind and with each other and that's the true work of leadership and so sometimes we, we just position all this all we doing is be excited with the car excited with the phone and that's it maybe we want the position but not the responsibility Are you, are you guys getting this? Yes. Yeah. You get this. Other people can be on there, you know, <laughs> you know, you know, uh, this, uh, these guys, they, 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 are, they have a true Nike town. Nike is such an interesting company. They are so committed to winning and producing world-class people that they, they, they would have ordinary people believe in their world-class. You know, you put on, you know, in Spain, they got this bullfighting thing. You know the bullfighting guys, they wear tight pants. Some of the guys, they just wear tight pants. <laughs> they don't even want to fight the bull, they just wear tight pants. <laughs> and so in, in Nike town, in Nike town, in, 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 in Oregon area, you know, they have bears and they have all kinds of things. There's two guys, there's two guys who are doing the Nike thing. And some people like Nike so much, they would put the Nike logo, they would, they would have t- t- tattooed on themselves permanently because they would be called them Eakins. Nike spelled backwards. Can you imagine someone like your leadership so much that they will that they will tattoo on me? So I tell female, be careful when you love. When you tattoo the fella name on you, you're not bring up. <laughs> Talk to your lunch. And so two guys, two 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 Eakins, they were they were they were out in the jungle doing their thing. This bear rolled up on them. And guess what one of the guys did? So you know what a bear, any of y'all ever see a grizzly bear? When we go on vacation sometimes in Memphis, uh, we go in the mountains and get bears all over the place. Bears throwing away your garbage. You know, you, you know how dogs in the Bahamas throw away garbage? Bears be throwing away garbage. Big bears. You go, you go inside at the wrong time, dog it, Lord help you. This is why you see a lot of Republicans like that have their own gun. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and so th- th- this, this, this bear rolled up on them and so one of the guys what he did was he started to put on his shoes and the other guy looked and said what you put on your shoes you can't outrun that bear the fellow said yeah I know I know that all I gotta do is outrun you <laughs> <laughs> he decided the situation right away and that's what we gotta do sometimes with leaders we gotta always size up the situation because people are depending on you to be you to not just be productive as an individual, but to be productive as a leader. And so let me wrap up with this. How much time left? How much time left? Let me wrap up with this. So, so, back to my story with Mr. Barrows in Jamaica. So now I am, I am finished with the lesson that he was in, and, and I realize, hey, I know what to do. So I hired this coach. She took me on a couple runs. And let me something. You can never, nobody, none of us. You know, the Bible talks about life and that being the power of the tongue. None of us can outperform the words we use. If you don't get the theme right, you can never perform that. And it's important for all of us to get our theme right. And so I'm going to give you like 15 things right now in quick succession that, that you tell me you can write it down on the front. Uh, I'm going to give you 15 things in succession right now because if you want to be a better leader in the 21st century, you've got to get these things right. And if you don't get them right, you're going to suffer. Like, think about this. It's better well. It's better than the Bahamas say. You know, a lot of a lot of visitors know that, you know, when we in the Bahamas, you know that. You remember we tried to change that theme from it's better in the Bahamas that it keeps getting better? No, we don't. No, we don't want it. it it's better in the Bahamas, period. The customers decided it's better in the Bahamas. And so it's going to be very difficult to outperform that theme is better in Bahamas. And for those of you who, who you know, I, I love politics. I mean, think about the themes that have won election. It's time for a change. We believe in Bahamians. It's the people's time. Think about it, the matter of trust. You could never outperform your theme. Nobody can outperform your theme. And you've got to think about what's your theme. The way you become a leader in the 21st century is you've got to think about this now. Let's get back to my story for one quick second. I wanted to, I wanted to get better when I shook my hand. Something happened to me when I shook the guy's hand. 
Before I shook the guy's hand, all I was doing was getting the beaten. When I shook the guy's hand, something happened in my mind. Leadership always starts in the mind. That spark, and you gotta pay attention to that spark. Let me share something. Y'all see this? What happens if I do this? What happens? Fire, right? Now let me ask you, where is the fire before I strike the match? The match is not on fire. Where, where, where is the fire? The fire is on the box. The box is on fire. Where, where is the fire? It's sticking. <laughs> See, because, see, because that, that every boy starts to know that I don't need this to create fire. Here. The fire starts off inside me. And that's where leadership starts as well. Leadership starts off inside all of us. Whether it's that idea that I can, I can get better, or, or if you see something, like if, 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 if one of us dropped down now with a heart attack, are there, are there any doctors in the room? No, right? I guarantee if I drop right now at a heart attack, there's, there's going to be some leader in this room who's going to take over. They're going to see something and they're going to, going to do something that nobody else in this room will do. Right? And that's where leadership starts. It starts on the inside, and that's why when it starts on the inside, you can do the impossible. And so, when, when I realize that, when I realize that spark, I call him Mr. Bossley. Whenever you get that spark, that spark is going to require you to become better. You ever watch a movie where the, where the star don't change? That's a boring movie. Eh? Mm -hmm. I hate movies where the stars don't change, don't go to no change. Or I hate movies where the, where the stars get killed. Like who would, who, which idiot would make a movie and you kill the star? Okay. <laughs> it is because people go to the movies to see a good story where the guy gets the girl, he gets the car, he gets the money. We go to the stuff to the movies for happily ever after, not for reality. You want reality, you watch the most. <laughs> I go to the movies for entertainment. And so, the leadership starts with that spark, and that spark is an indication to you that you can get better. And that's why you show up to this, this meeting today. Everybody's in this meeting. They hear because they believe that they can get better. They believe that they're going to hear something that will cause them to become better. There's always that hope. And when we sell and stuff, we should always be selling people a better version of themselves because that's what we all buy. I put on my suit, I put on whatever. I put it on because I believe that that thing is going to make me a better version of me. So if you're taking notes, leadership starts off with a vision, an idea, a spark. And then after you get that idea of a spark, it requires you to get better. And you've got to find a way to get better. If you don't find a way to get better, you're not going to get better. And so part of me getting better was I called up somebody who could help me. There's always somebody who can help you. When it starts off inside you, whatever you need is always near you. Because everything we need is already in us. See, it only, it only looks like promotion comes from men and women. Promotion comes from... Yeah. Oh, Promotions may be confirmed with men will come from a bit. And so, any boss pick then gave me my, my, my cue and I hired this lady to, 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 to help me get fit up. And so on our first run, something happens to me. So we're running around the sports center and, and as we're running around the sports center, I'm getting tired. And what do normal people do when they get tired? Stop. They stop it. You know what the chick told me? Say, bro, speed up. She told me to surge. Everybody say surge. Yeah. She told me to surge, and as I surge, something happened. I got this second win. Any of y'all have experienced second win before? You run and you run and you're tired, and you just kept going, and all of a sudden you're not tired anymore. Well, I got the second win. As I joined it, and we kept running and went for a little bit longer, but something happened again. My second win ran, ran out too, and she told me something that I remember to this very day. And my daughter's not going to try to teach you. She said, now, when you get really, really tired, she says, what you gotta do is you gotta force your mind to make the body go. Because you see, 
It's the mind that runs the show, not the body. Because if you listen to your, if you listen to your body, <laughs> you will always want to exercise tomorrow. <laughs> you always want to do important things tomorrow. You never listen to your body. You have to, you have to make sure your mind running the show. And so she told me how to, how to get in this, this thing we call lactic acid. It's just build up. They be really, really tired. So you've got, most people have never ever worked themselves to the place where they really, really tired. And so she worked me to the place where I was really, really tired, but I was exhausted. And she said, hold on for two seconds. She said, because this is where, a moment, 10 minutes ago, this is where champions are made when you can hold on for two or three seconds. Because I tell you, did you know that what, 50 meters? All those long races? You can see when athletes run in. You can see when they're close to the finish line. And you can always tell who about to lose? You know what they start to do? They start to look around. <laughs> I mean, I remember in Spain, Barcelona, Marlene Audi was one of the greatest runners we've had in the Caribbean. Who did who, who didn't win gold? This girl in 100 meters in Barcelona, she is in front. When you're in the 100 meters, you don't see nobody. Guess what you are? You in where? And guess what she does? When she is about to cross the finish line, guess what she does? She look around, and guess what happened? Gail Divas passes her. And I'm telling you, that was so disappointing for me because I was, you know, I don't go to the US. And when they're up against the But it happens. And you gotta learn to hold on. And you see in these long races as well. So, you guys remember when, uh, our Bahamian guy, Avad Montiel in, in, in Canada, he won the 400 meters for the first time. We won gold. But what people forget is in that same competition, there was an upset in the 10,000 meters. What happened in 10,000 meters is the, the world champion got upset. And the guy who beat him, when, when, when they interviewed him, he was so animated. He says, uh, The guy asked, How did you win the race? He says, uh, he says uh, I was running, world champion make big mistake. He says, uh, he says, 40 meters before the finish line. He says, normally this is when world champion takes over. He says, but I noticed something. 40 meters before the finish line, I'm still here. <laughs> and he says, I have a surgeon kick, and my surgeon kick has not kicked in yet. <laughs> and I said to myself, mine, make, let go. Mine, make, let go. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, that's why I won the race. <laughs> This mind is a serious thing. People don't think about it. This, this, I mean, the mind is it. We, we don't know what we can do with our mind. Same thing with, there's this other guy, the minister can tell you this, because he, you know, he knows track and field just as well as anybody else. This guy, Nicolas Mel Roche, he was either one of the best mid-distance runners who can't win gold in Olympics. He can win gold in world championship, he can win gold in other races, but when it comes to the Olympics, he just can't do it. You don't know people like that. The crunch time, Game on the line. Game on the line. I can shoot 90% of the free throw line. All I got to do is put these two in. And my team win. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at that net. Looking at that. And the fans. Why is he going to miss? Why is he going to miss? The mind starts to play tricks you. That's why in football, you don't be able to freeze in the kicker. Freezing the kicker, that's as real as anything. And so Hickey Melton Rouge, he cannot win the big one for some reason. He cannot win Olympic gold for whatever reason. This Olympics, he's sick. He, he doesn't want to perform, and guess what he does? He decides he's going to do it anyway. You know what happens then? Lap before the last lap, his body is exhausted. He is done. But he keeps going. And you know what he said? You know what he said when, when he won the gold medal? He said, I don't know how I did it, but I kept going. And what, what took me across the finish line was beyond the mind. He said, what took me there was momentum. <laughs> <laughs> so all of us, there's there so much more that we can do with our lives if we pay attention to details. And so, by the time I was finished with all of my training with this guy, I had new language, I had new ways of thinking about it, and so I encountered this guy to make him do it again. 
One year later. This is a true story. You all need to look it up. I'm the only Caribbean child from the Bahamas ever. Just got to look it up. You know,